Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Quant Network, aka QNT. So let's just dive in and let's start off with this tweet here from Greg Lunt27. And we do see new Quant Network tweets, an eye-opening quote from the BIS about a unified programmable ledger. We've been linking the BIS to QNT for years now. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Now, he is quoting uh, the tweet from Quant, where they did mention um, a quote from the BIS general manager, Augustin Karstens, which also did have some negative views on crypto and technology, saying that it lost a fight to fiat currency, which I thought was funny, but hey, it is what it is. We do see a unified programmable ledger could unleash an explosion of innovation in payments and money comparable to the arrival of the smartphone. Very interesting. Do see over here from just a tech guy we've seen a full post of the article here talking about this and how transformative it could be to financial uh to the entire financial system and how big of a catalyst they could be as well to opening more doors of opportunity within tokenization and things like that um then down here we did see a few participants that were talking about the evolution of cbdc's and crypto asset use cases and things like that um, we also seen like a few of the areas of focus point, but then on the second tab here, you do see a few of the names and yes, the electronics and IT standardization department of the BIS, um, uh, an individual from that area w was actually discussing opportunities within this as well. And then down here, we did see there are all sorts of initiatives underway in various global regions to improve, re um, I, I believe this is regional participation through better financial processes. This has been encouraged by the World Bank and the BIS, and a number of private efforts have already been launched with the expansion potential. The group mentioned in this posting is LAC Chain. Hmm, interesting. We all know who LAC Chain is working with, um, but then on the second tab here, we do see Gilbert Verdian, and he comments, I know you must be buzzing. We're close to those policymakers, including the BIS. It's a transformational time in financial markets and infrastructure. And that's basically what Greg Lunt27 uh, posted as well. For example, here you guys have that quote. And then on the second tab here, we do see they're looking at both domestic and cross-border. We have covered both use cases and capabilities and have been talking to the central banks, BIS, and policymakers in government on how this should work. We're helping shape the landscape for CBDCs. Yeah, there's a lot of connections here. Now, yeah, we could speculate all day long, but we have to wait for a full confirmation of Quant working with them. In my opinion, it would make sense. Uh, we know that the future monetary system is on its way. We know that there's a, a, a radical shift happening around technologies, specifically within financial use cases. So it would not surprise me if Quant was working with the BIS, but we still need to see uh, what's going to go on within this. But over here... We also seen uh, the BIS announce uh, to contribute to the G20 cross-border payments program. The BIS Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructure calls for nominations for a new task force on cross-border payments and travelability and, and extension. And of course, just a tech guy. Like, first off, I got to give a huge shout out to Greg Lund27 as well as just a tech guy. I constantly see them everywhere. It does not matter... <laughs> what i'm clicking if i'm clicking anything around cross-border payments or evolution of uh, finance they're there for example project nexus and cbdc interoperability with standardized apis and uh yeah apis is the big key here especially around cbdc interoperability um, but over here from the BIS breakdown, we do see CPMI establishes task force on cross-border payments and interoperability and extension to contribute to the G20 cross-border payments program. Uh, the task force will work on the extension of access to and operating hours of payment systems as well as their interlinking across borders. They also invite nominations or sorry, invites nominations for the task force from banks, non-bank payment service providers and market infrastructure providers that participate or plan to participate in the cross-border payments market as well as industry associations. So again, um, big, big updates happening around enhancing cross-border payments, speed and transparency, which I know all of you are thinking probably right now watching this video. Uh, what about XRP? What about XRP? Because we know XRP with crossword payments, it's a big deal. Yeah, I do believe that XRP, I think that a lot of um, the DLT technology that we talk about on this channel is going to be involved in some sort of way in the evolution of the entire infrastructure for payments. Um, it's going to take time, though. This is not going to be an overnight thing. Um, it's not going to happen instantly. It's going to take time. These things do take time to really kind of build out and go fully live. 
Um, I do think that we are getting closer and closer as the day goes on. Um, but one thing that I will love to note is things happening around Ripple with, you know, even the mention of Swift and stuff like that. For an example, from ISO 2022, let's do it over on Twitter. We do see Bank of International Settlements cites Ripple versus Swift while discussing combining digital currencies with Swift messaging uh, system for payments. And um, I included this in a video recently, actually, if we look at this, by the way, this is May of 2022, just to give you guys a full in-depth view. I know that a lot of people are saying like, you know, old article, a lot of changes, all this kind of stuff. It still holds strong today on what's actually happening with DLT and some of these major systems. We always focus on Swift because Swift does have a connection to like 10,000 plus financial institutions. I think originally it was 11,000, but I think uh, a lot of things have changed since then. But uh, they are a foundational infrastructure for the entire financial system. So we always do focus on them. But now, now down here, we do see the system can provide more information, transparency regarding each node's liquidity status and currency exchange rate. This is 102. Uh, this does talk about DLT, some DLT infrastructure to combine a messaging system competing directly with Swift with digital currency and blockchain technology in retail payments. And they do say such a design can transfer transaction information and settle payments simultaneously and immediately after payment is initiated from the sender. Now, where does Ripple come into play here? Well, this is 102. Citation 102. We do see Ripple versus Swift transforming cross border remittance using blockchain technology. So, listen, a lot of what we see around the space is evident to some of the largest players out there, like the BIS. Uh, I'm sure that Swift is aware of this. Listen, the Swift CEO and Brad Garlinghouse were on the same stage debating on uh, payment payments and the evolution of payments and things like that. All of what we are seeing, I will say, um, is kind of leading us up to the Big Bang Theory. Um, and, and when I say that, I mean, we're going to see the traditional world um, and the world of crypto and digital assets and all that kind of stuff converge into one. What comes from that is the new system. This new system is rising. We see everything really kind of, you know, churning into this big... Um, event if you will of everything going fully live now it's not, like i said it's not going to happen overnight but we are seeing things being worked into place now if you were just a normal retail investor you probably are not seeing this but considering the fact that you guys are watching this video right now i'm sure that you guys are all aware of all the updates that are taking place uh for an example Shout out to Just the Tech Guy again. We do see Reserve Bank of Australia, Bank uh, Negara, Malaysia, uh, Monetary Authority of Singapore, and also South African Reserve Bank. All of these major banks um, are coming together on Project Dunbar, which is an initiative by the BIS Innovation Hub Singapore Center in collaboration with the MAS and plans to work with central banks, financial institutions, and technology partners. And we do see XRP being tagged here because XRP we all know is working with some of these players already um, in the secondary tab here though you could see something very interesting so here we have this includes on-chain liquidity providers automated market makers through liquidity pools managed by smart contracts use of intermediate settlement assets for illiquid currency pairs <clears throat> xrp and optimization of algorithms for price matching including through different uh, intermediate currencies or alternative settlement assets XRP is the perfect settlement token for a lot of these major opportunities around CBDCs, especially with DLT uh, platforms being in place. Um, I think that as we do focus on some of these projects and these assets like XRP, HBAR, Algorand, all of them, uh, they all have specific use case potential. The reason why I talk about QNT quite a bit on this channel is because, and I've said it time and time again in the past, if you believe in crypto, if you believe in the long-term view around crypto, then you ultimately need to believe in what Quant is trying to do. See, everyone looks at Quant and they're like, all right, well, whatever, it's just another ERC-20 token, not knowing that one, it's blockchain agnostic, so it can move from chain any chain to any chain, um, but it's also helping these tokens be realized in. See, we're, we're already seeing these huge initiatives and these huge projects underway from names like the BIS or you know, even the IMF. Um, and a, a lot of them do include major banks, as you guys do see here. These are giants. These are giants that are transacting in the billions and trillions of dollars. And even Swift, right? Like we go back to Swift, like Swift is, you know, Swift could be combined with digital currencies and DLT and 
crypto in general uh, to modernize a huge aspect of the payments landscape, aka those 11,000 plus financial institutions. Things are in place. We're starting to see that. We're starting to see things move pretty quickly. There's still obstacles in place, which, yes, we will talk about. But one thing that I love to know on this channel is the, the power of quant because, you know, this is any to any, right? Any to any interoperability. So, like, whatever Ripple is trying to connect to. So, um, we'll say, say for so, Ripple wants to connect to another, I don't know, 1,000 banks. Um, and we already know that Quant has a has a partnership with. Uh, we'll, we'll say we'll utilize the Nexi um, partnership as an example because that that that's the big one. We talk about Nexi quite a bit on this channel with Quant. You know, five hundred and seventy plus banks. So if we look at that connection, having XRP, well, I should say having the XRP ledger tied to um overledger already through a connection as you guys you see down here blockchains like there's already a ton of blockchains tied to this it allows exposure for xrp to be utilized as a settlement token through all those banks meaning ripple already has that direct tie with overledger i do think that ripple is utilizing um overledger support i've talked about this even with um the digital pound foundation they're both major partnerships of the digital pound foundation yes it's a think tank organization but i still think that they're realizing the value of combining these two uh networks aka ripple net with overledger um and this is great this is a great initiative because if you do combine that then you see all the connections in place you can see the value realized through all of these blockchain technologies combining it with other networks like for an example you have xrp down here but you also have ripple net up here and you could see how all of this could be directly tied to one another. You could have everything directly settled through one network. You could have everything tied to just one network instead of having Ripple say, okay, well, we need to have this partnership. We have to have that partnership, this partnership, that. Like, it, it, it's a lot easier to have any to any network capability. And that compatibility between any network is a game changer. That's why I've always said that like what Quant's doing, having all of these gateways, right, through the Overledger gateway, um, having that and having all major DLTs plug and played through this is a huge game. Like interoperability at this scale uh, is never seen, it has never been seen. Like this is new age technology. This is the evolution of interoperability technology. And it's crucial, like this is crucial because right now as we do look at banks, there is over a hundred banks engaging and planning crypto activities. This got posted on the 22nd of this month. The FDIC says 136 banks are engaging and planning crypto activities. So all of these banks want to utilize crypto. The problem is, and the biggest issue is, is that they don't know how to connect. They don't know how to utilize uh, crypto fully. They want to custody crypto. They want to hold crypto and provide crypto to their customers. But that doesn't really change things. We need to see the evolution of payment technology and banking technology. How do we do that? Well, we need to have that conversion of traditional finance with crypto technology blockchain technology and it's only going to be made possible through interoperability and it's th this is plug and play interoperability this is a huge game changer it allows for banks to utilize smart contracts to utilize dlt technology so this is huge and as i said yes th th we do need to get over the obstacles right now because we do see here crypto's banking problem industry needs access but u.s regulators keep digital assets at bay Regulations are holding a lot of these major banks outside from utilizing crypto as well. Like this is a big problem, right? For example, here you have Germany's second largest bank to offer crypto custody services to institutionals. Like we're seeing major adoption outside of the US. We need a harmonized approach to crypto regulation. We need to have uh, crypto regulation not be an obstacle anymore because that's the last thing holding a ton of money on the sidelines, waiting to jump into this space and utilize a lot of this technology. And a lot of it is financial institutional um, and banking clients that want to utilize this technology. So just imagine what happens 
once we have this obstacle broken and we see the banks and the big financial institutions jumping on this technology it's going to be a game changer so with that being said i hope that you guys enjoyed this video because you definitely have a like subscribe to notifications on because i'm a free content you guys are more than welcome to follow me on twitter and join the free discord in the description below uh so it's up to you all have a beautiful day beautiful night wherever you guys are on this before this has been nick peace out guys